Hey drummers, it's Rob Litton here from drumsaword.com. Welcome to this free mini song lesson where today I'm going to be showing you the best parts, the coolest parts from the song Stink Fist by Tool, drummed of course by Danny Carey. And this song was suggested over on my YouTube channel by you guys on the community tab of the channel. I asked you guys to uh, give me your song suggestions and then also to go into the suggestions and upvote the ones that you'd like to see the most. And I did one last week uh, and uh, the most popular one from last week, I forget what it is now, but uh, this was the second most popular suggestion uh, and so I'm very happy to do that for you guys today. You can get the free PDF where I'm going to show you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sections, the best beats fills from the song. All three pages can be downloaded for free from my website, you find a link beneath this video. So have this printed out in front of you as we go through this together. So, the first drum beat, Daddy comes in at 28 seconds. This all starts off relatively simple. We get this drum beat at the beginning. One E and uh, two and. So the bass drum comes down on one E. Then we get this flow of hi-hat notes and uh, two, where it goes into an open hi-hat with the snare drum on beat two. It stays open for the whole of the beat and then closes on beat three where the same pattern is repeated. Three E and uh, four and. By the way, I think um, Danny comes in uh, the first time with um, one E and a two. The first time he comes in, uh, it's a crash cymbal on beat one. And um, I can't remember if we get the and a two, but after that first bar, this is the pattern he then repeats. One E and a two and three E and a four and one E and a two and three E and a four and one. And now let's hear that up to speed without the microphone on so you can hear just the drums. Here we go. So at 36 seconds, Danny, um, sort of, uh, 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 the drum beats evolved slightly, it changes slightly. Same sort of idea with the bass drum and snare drum. We've still got this one E, two, and three E, four, but the hi-hat over the top of it changes. So the first half of the bar, we get one E and uh, two, and, before we had the two and, now it's two and three. So only opening on the and of beat two and closing on beat three, not for the whole of the beat. But then from beat three, he plays three E and a four E and. So the hi-hat continues and a four E and all the way up to the and of beat four. So slightly extended length of, of hi-hat notes there. So slowly, one E and a two and three E and a four E and. One E and a two and three E and a four E and. One E and a two and three E and a four E and. One E and a two. E and a 40 and one and up to speed. So this next section I've got for you occurs at one minute 11 um, and uh, the first bar is in um, four, four, so four beats of the bar. The second bar is just half that length. It just has two beats in it. And throughout this, we, we, uh, Danny sort of introduces us to this very Danny sort of thing where he's using the toms all over the place. Part of the orchestration is, is using the toms. So the first bar though, we just got the bass drum and snare drum. He's up on the ride cymbal. First beat, one and duh, that bass drum on the uh of beat two, uh, of the uh of beat one there. And then two E and, two E and. Then from beat three, he plays three E and a uh, four. So we get the three E uh into a snare and crash on four, which he does a lot for the song as well. Lots of crash cymbals going on. Three E and a uh, four, and, and then a bass drum at the end of the bar on the uh, a four, before we're going into the second bar, which as I said earlier on is, is a, beat, a bar of two, four. We got our first introduction to the Tom stuff, where he plays, and by the way, um, the, the amount of toms Danny has, I, I, I've transcribed this for four toms, I think Danny has a lot more toms than that. Um, so when, if, I, if I say, for example, play on the medium tom, you could play it on the high tom instead, or even the floor tom. It doesn't matter what toms you use, as long as like, you're going down the pitch, if the, if the toms are going down the pitch, or up if they're going up, you can choose where you start on what tom. So I think I've written it for this one, well, I have, I've written it for this, this tom in front of me, this medium tom. 
and he plays one E and then and uh, two into a snare drum and uh, two straight afterwards into the bass drum on the E, two E and then rather interestingly he comes over to the floor tom and he plays and uh, not and uh, because he plays the right cymbal at the same time and uh, so that left hand plays two notes there and uh, on that floor tom. So that bar of two is one E, one E and uh, two E and uh. One E and uh, two E and uh. So the two bars together, one, a two E and three E, a four and a one E and a two E and a. Uh. So the interesting bit there is going from the first bar into the second bar, four and a one E and. Four and a one E and a two E and a. Uh. Bit faster, one, a two E and three E, a four, a one E and a two. Sorry, one E. One E and a two E and a. I'm going to keep all these mistakes in, by the way, just to show you how tricky this, this stuff is to read off the page. Do that again. One, a two E and three E, a four, a one E and a two E and a one. So now let's see that up to speed. So this drum fill occurs at 1 minute 35, it really stands out, it's a cool idea. Um, it, it proceeds with the sort of drum beat we've been getting um, earlier in the song. 1 E and a 2, the hi-hat opens for the whole of beat 2. And then from beat 3, he plays this. 3 E and, and then from the end of beat 3, we get four 30 second notes. And, and then uh, two bass drum notes. Now you can play double bass drum. But it's, it's at that tempo, uh, and Danny can certainly play as single footed. I couldn't be sure 100% whether he used the double bass drum. I'm going to use the single pedal because, luckily for me, it's not that difficult for me to play this up to speed. And also, it means I don't have to move my, uh, my, my, my hi hat foot to the auxiliary pedal. I can just stay on the, um, the hi hat. So he gets 3 E and a 4. 3 E and a 4. It could be and, uh, it doesn't matter what tom you use, but it needs to be one up here because your right hand's going to play, play on the snare drum. You could play it left, right, which means you could play that if you wanted to. Again, it doesn't matter. Three E and a four. Three E and a four. Ah. That was it. So the whole bar slowly. One E and a two and three E and a four and one E and a two and three E and a four and. And let's see that up to speed a couple of times as well. So at 2 minute 46, Danny goes into one of his sort of uh, signature um, uh, grooves using all the toms, beautiful orchestration being used here. Again, I'll just, I'll just point out one more time that um, if I say it's on the high tom, you could play it on the medium tom, etc, etc. Don't get hung up on what toms you use. What, what's important here is the rhythm, the, notate, the, the actual rhythm itself, not what toms you use. But this is what I think he's playing. It makes sense to me. It means you can move around the kick comfortably. And I'm hearing these different pictures, pictures of toms correctly, I think. So it starts off with a flam between his two lowest toms with the bass drum. One. Now I think he then plays the right hand on the lowest tom. So he gets one E. It could be one E, but I think that second note is a bit um, is quite low. So I think he's, he plays a left hand flam and then right. But you could play left hand flam and left depending on how you how comfortable you are with your flams. But I think he's playing one E, then skips over the and, comes in with the bass drum on the er. Uh, so we get one E and er. Uh. Then he comes up to this tom here, two and. So rather simple, two and. And then a really cool idea, just a single hi-hat foot on beat three. Three where he goes to his highest tom. Three E and uh. Three E and uh. Then down to the next lowest tom. Four E and uh. So he's then in position again to do this flam at the beginning. Four E and uh, one E. So you've got to be pretty fast with going from single strokes into a flam. It takes a little bit of practice that putting these flams in there comfortably. But slowly that first bar, one E, a two, and three E, a four E, and a. One E, a two, and three E, a four E, and a. 
Now, when he plays it live, he, he, he definitely changes the, um, this, this around. But on the recording, he sort of held back quite a bit. There's a lot of space in that groove. So then he goes on to the second bar, and it's exactly the same as the first bar. The fourth bar is also exactly the same, but the third bar has a, has a cool little turnaround in it, which I, I, I found interesting. Um, and I think he plays at the beginning, instead of playing the flam, you can sort of hear him just play two single notes. So I think he just plays one E, not a flam. One, by the way, you could play, you could take out the flams and just play that every time instead. If you wanted to, rather than, it's up to you. But this third bar, he definitely doesn't. He plays one E, so up the toms, one E, uh, and then up to this tom here, any tom in front of the snare drum, because you've got to come down to the snare drum, he plays two E and, two E and. Instead of before it was two and, now it's two E and, just for that one bar. Then the rest of that bar continues with the uh, four E, uh, uh, sorry, um, three E, uh, four E and. So that bar on its own, we get one E, uh, two E and, three E, uh, four E. One E, one E, uh, one E, a two E and the three E, a four E and a. Now you're going to find the same thing as well. You, you, you think might get a little bit confused. It doesn't really matter if you accidentally play a bass drum instead of the hi hat foot. It's still going to be the same sort of rhythm. So slowly those four bars, and I'm probably going to make a few mistakes here because reading it off the page is quite tricky. Especially when I'm having to turn around like this. Anyway, that's my excuse out of the way. We get. One E, a two, and three E, a four E, and a one E, a one E, a two, and three E, a four E, and a one E, a two E, and three E, a four E, and a one E, a one E, a two, and three E, a four E, and a. So I was making a few mistakes there by forgetting to play the bass drum uh, on beat one. What I found the hardest thing here was was uh, was transferring it from the page into muscle memory. So. After about half an hour of practicing this, uh, if I had have done that, it would have felt more comfortable uh, and I would probably been able to look away from the page and just memorize the, mo the motion. And you'll find that a lot, with, a lot with Danny's stuff is that you do need to spend a lot of time playing it slowly, repeating it lots of times, and so it becomes muscle memory. You don't have to think about it because if you have to think about all the parts through the song, it's, it's, it's quite a lot to, rem to, to memorize. You sort of need to have your body help you a little bit and the muscle memory work for you. Anyway, Let's hear those four bars played up to speed. So straight after that section I just showed you at 258, he plays this. Um, and uh, this was quite hard for me to work out uh, what toms he's using for. I had to watch um, a couple of versions of him playing it live, uh, recorded by some guy on, on the side of the stage, which was very useful. And I can sort of see what he's doing here with, with his hands, even though it was still quite difficult to hear and see exactly what he's doing. But this totally makes sense to me. Uh, and again, it's one of those things where it flows around the drums nicely. You can hear all the different pitches, but if you want to experiment with your own orchestration of the toms, absolutely fine. It's just a flow of 16th notes, but he starts with the crash symbol at the beginning. So this is what I think he's playing. One E and a, uh, up to highest tom. One E and a, uh, two, comes back down to that tom. So your right hand stays on that tom. One E and a, uh, two. And then this is the important bit. He puts a bass drum in on the E of two, and you can see him do that on, on certain videos. So it gives his hands time to come over to the um, snare drum and the tom in front of him. Not this tom, because you want to have that just tom stand out on its own on the uh of one. But then this time for the and of the beat, he plays a flam between the snare and the tom in front of him. And, uh, and, uh. It almost sounds like a flam on the snare drum on its own. And, uh, you could do it that way instead. But that's a lot of movement there. And you probably want, probably want to give yourself a bit of a rest. Again, I, I saw Daddy play it live, and he doesn't do that. He plays it like this. So you get this one snare drum coming down on the hands, flammed with the um, tom in front of you, and, uh, and that left hand plays that second note. So that beginning, the first two beats are this, is this, one E and uh, two E and uh. Then from beat three onwards, he plays um, two beats worth 
and repeats them. So the only difference here, instead of starting on the crash cymbal, he plays between the two lowest toms with the bass drum still, one E. So I think he then plays the left hand on this tom because you wouldn't play one E. He plays one E, one E and a, uh, two E and a. Uh. One E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, and a. Uh. One E and a, uh, two E and a. Uh. And just learn to perhaps loop that round a few times. One E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, one E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, one E and a, uh, two E and a. Uh. And you can make a few mistakes like that where you miss the drums. Again, it's one of those patterns you want to get into muscle memory so you can look away from the page and just look at where you're, where you're hitting the drums so you won't miss any. So slowly the first bar. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Second bar. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So you can see that's already starting to settle into muscle memory for me. So let's hear those two bars up to speed. So this next drum feels really cool at 3 minute 50. He's up on the right cymbal. First part of the beat, bar one and a two and. So a snare drum and crash on two, two and. And then from beat three, he, he moves into 16th note triplets. So each beat three and beats three and beats four contains six 16th note triplets each. So we're going from one E and a, two E and a into three to the ante to four to the ante to diddle 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 And up on the crash cymbal on beat one, uh, on beat three, straight into the snare drum sixteenth notes. Three to ta and ta ta. Now underneath that, it's really subtle, but you can sort of hear it if you, if you listen carefully. He's playing the bass drum on three and four and throughout this entire fill. So we get three to ta and ta, three to ta and ta, ta, three to ta and ta, ta. And notice that first sixteenth note triplet on the snare drum is written in brackets as a ghost note because. He sort of naturally plays that, that first snare drum note a little bit quieter. Don't worry about that too much, it's just a very subtle dynamic thing. You could play them all the same volume. But Danny doesn't, he sort of builds up in volume a little bit towards the beginning. Then from beat four, staying on in the triplet mode, we come up to this tom here, could be this tom, it doesn't matter. He then plays two, two, two with the bass drum underneath. Uh, three to ta and ta ta, of course. So slowly, three to ta and ta ta, four to ta and ta ta, one. With the bit at the beginning, one, a two, and three to ta and ta ta, four to ta and ta ta, one. And let's hear that a couple of times up to speed. So then at 3 minute 53, there's uh, three bars of cool um, groove, which I wanted to show you, but really it's the drum fill at the end that really stuck out, stood out for me in, in the fourth bar. So we go through the, the, the grooves themselves because they're really good fun. Again, using loads of toms, crash cymbals everywhere. It's just you know, a, a real feast of, 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 of crash cymbalness. Um, so the first bar we get one, a two, and. Then for beat three, Three E and a, uh, and I think he uses the highest tom. Three E and a uh, four into a crash, a uh, four. Then down to these two toms to play and a, uh, both at the same time, into a crash into beat one of the next bar, and a uh, one. So that bar again, one, a uh, two, and the E and a uh, four, and a. Uh. The second bar, cool idea here, where we get the snare drum, well, the left hand playing these and a uh, three E and a, uh, um, and a two E and a three E and a kind of idea across across the bar playing every third sixteenth note with the right hand still maintaining um, the right symbol but throwing in some crash symbols as we see. So he plays one and a two, one and a up to your highest tom, two E and into a crash, two E and then back down to the snare drum, three E and a. 3 E and a 4 into a crash on beat 4 and then down to the two lowest toms and a. So the end of bar 1 had the, the slightly higher set of toms. The second bar ends with the lower set of toms. So 1 and a 2 E and 3 E and a 4 and a. The third bar is very similar to the first bar except for the end of it. We get 1, a 2 and 3 E and a 4. A four, a four and a, 
a little push there on the bass drum on the uh of beat four before we go into this fourth bar, this, this really cool drum fill. Before I show you what to do, what he plays, I just want a little bit of theory, is that what he's doing here with the crash cymbals, you're hearing um, the crash cymbals every third note again. One E and a two E and a three E and a four. So you've got to listen up for that sort of pattern as you're playing along with the song. Is that it's not random those crashes, they're occurring at specific points in the beat. One E and a two E and a three E and a four. So it goes, with bar, it goes across the bar in a really cool way. And in between each of those crashes, he's playing four 30 second notes on various toms. So the uh, fill starts with the snare drum and crash. One, then he comes up to this, high, this, this tom here, I believe, because the next tom's going to be higher. So we get one E and, one E and, and then back, uh, sorry, then it goes to this bass drum and crash cymbal. Uh, up to the highest tom, two E, <clears throat> two E and, then back down to the original tom, a uh, three and, uh, a uh, three E, sorry. We can't 16th notes. And then it's kind of hard to hear on the recording, but I think he just plays one set of notes here between these two toms on the uh of beat three, a uh, four, a uh, four, and then the two lowest toms and a. Uh. So slowly, and it's quite hard to count this. Uh, that's my, well, it is for me anyway. One E and a uh, two E. And a uh, three E and a uh, four E and a. Uh. And I'll now try and play all four bars um, together. One, a uh, two, and three E and a uh, four, and a uh, one, and a uh, two E and three E and a uh, four, and a uh, one, a uh, two, and three E and a uh, four, and a uh, one. And this is the cat one E and a uh, one E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a uh, uh, four. So I sort of felt it after a while. Uh, I'll do that again for you. I'm sort of hearing one E uh, and the E uh, four. That's much easier to take it off the page once you've once you've learnt the rhythm rather than have to count it out loud. So let's hear those four bars played up to speed now. Then finally, the last bit I've got for you occurs at 4 minute 31. Um, and the first part is just him going crazy with the crashes as usual. We get one and a two E and, should be the right symbol there. One and a two E and, one and a two E and. And then from beat three, we get some incredibly fast notes. Well, they're 30 second notes again, uh, but they're played so smoothly, they sound very, very fast. He's playing simply three, e, uh, and again, we've got to count 16th notes, so we're playing two 32nd notes for each 16th note we count. Three, E, and, uh. So basically the first beat, beat three is all on the snare drum. Then up to, because it then goes down four toms, so up to the highest tom uh, here, four, E, and, uh. And that requires a little bit of skill to get down the toms without missing them at this tempo. And I found that quite hard to do uh, with the snare drum bit at the beginning. Um, I sometimes missed the uh, the toms there as I just showed you. But slowly, one and a two e and e and a four e and a one. A bit hard to count aloud, but just just uh, um, uh, practice that around a few times. And I've just noticed here um, on the notation that it actually it's actually played on the highest tom, and then it goes down the rest of the toms. I've played it for beat three starting on the snare drum. That actually makes it a little bit harder because I have to move to that tom quickly. But I think I'm going to trust my notation here um, is that what I've written here, and this is what Danny plays, is he actually plays all the first beat on the high tom. So we get. Uh, that sort of tempo. Anyway, forgive me, I'm going to play the first um, beat three on the snare drum, but it's the same rhythm. Here's what that sounds like up to speed. Well, that was a that was a big one, um, and that's one of Tool's simpler songs. 
So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun for me to transcribe, work out, and then have a practice at play myself. Um, you can get the down, or you can download the free PDF from my website. Don't forget, there's a link beneath this video uh, that can be downloaded and saved and printed out. Um, and um, you might want to consider signing up to become an online member at my website, drumstheword.com. What I currently offer for $97 is a full year's online access to every single full video song lesson I've ever recorded and transcribed. And that's coming up to 450 famous and popular songs now. Unlike this lesson, I teach you the song from start to finish. Every single bar and fill, you get the fully transcribed PDF drum chart. And I've got almost 450 famous full song lessons up on the website already. As a thank you for signing up, I give you access to hundreds more videos teaching you many, many famous drum beats, fills, and even solos, including a lot of tool stuff. I give you three ebooks containing hundreds more famous drum beats, fills, and solos, also contain some tool stuff as well in there. And then over the year of your subscription, you also gain instant online access to all the new material that I upload for my members. And I record new lessons every week unless I'm ill or on, on, um, unless I'm Ill or on holiday, but to say online, ill or on holiday. Uh, so you've got lots of cool stuff to look forward to over the year of your subscription. And if you want to make any song suggestions here on YouTube, then you can go over to my channel and click on the community tab. Or you can go over to my Facebook page. Um, uh, you'll find a link to my Facebook page beneath this video as well. Any questions though, feel free to email me, robertdrumstheword.com. And until our next drums together, toodle pip and happy drumming to you.